Welcome to Hood Champion Boxing and Sports. In boxing, find a way to win, they find a way to lose. George Cambosis against Devin Haney. It's coming up next couple months down there in Australia. Ever since George Cambosis won all those belts from Teofimo Lopez, which he looked spectacular doing so, um, all of these guys in the 135-pound division are like sharks circling around Cambosis. Everybody wanted to get a sink their teeth into him. Everybody thinking Cambosis is going to be an easy fight. Um, he's a notch below all the elite, 130, 135, 140 pounders. He doesn't really deserve those belts. Um, any elite fighter at any of those weight classes will clip Cambosis, and that's what people are saying. However, I don't think so. Cambosis is a guy, he has grit, he's tough, he can box, he can bang. And the man is, in my opinion, the Australian Manny Pacquiao. Doesn't matter how good of a boxer you are in there with Cambosis, you're going to have to kill him. He, no matter how much reach advantage you have, speed advantage you have, um, height, no matter what kind of footwork you have, Cambosis has proven that he is a guy who's going to rise to the occasion on fight night. And when you look at what happened between him and Teofimo, it doesn't matter what, if Teofimo was emotional going into the fight, if he wasn't receiving a direction from his corner like he deserved. It's not, it, it, none of that matters. What matters is when he was in there with Teofimo, who arguably was probably the best 135-pound fighter, um, in the weight division, Cambosis made it look fairly easy. And him going in here against Devin Haney, look, let's just be real, okay? Who has the better wins out of Devin Haney and Teofimo? Okay? Devin Haney, Teofimo, Mickey Bay. Mickey Bay is an outstanding boxer, at, especially at that time. When Cambosis beat Mickey Bay, it's an extremely good fight, but Cambosis outwilled him, he outtoughed him, he outgritted him, he out Manny Pacquiao him. Over here with Devin Haney, he got in there with Gamboa. Can't count Gamboa, okay? Love Gamboa, man. When he first turned pro, I like the stuff he was doing in there, in the ring. It's amazing. Can't count that Gamboa win. That was a cherry pick. Gone correct, the way it was supposed to go. Got in there with Linares. You know, I got to give Devin Haynes some credit for that fight. But Linares wasn't at his apex. Linares was kind of on the decline. But it was a good step up for Devin Haney. Got to give him credit. And then after that, he fought Jojo Diaz. Good fight. Jojo Diaz is a really good fighter. Uh, but Devin Haney was moving, doing what he does, boxing, finding a way to win. So so good. You got to you got to give him that. Got to give him credit for that. Now he's here fighting Teofimo. So I think, in my opinion, the Mickey Bay win and the Teofimo win are, are bigger wins, in my opinion, than Devin Haney's. You say his signature wins. But at the same time, I gotta be real. Um, outside of that Teal Field, outside of the Teal Fimo win for Cambosis, the other names are the guys he beat good fighters, but that kept a was a top dog at 135. With Devin Haney, he hasn't really clipped any top dogs. Okay? So in my opinion, you got to give the edge. To, Cam, to, to Cambosis, and some people may say, well, he, he won't be able to, to replicate that performance. I think he will fairly easily, okay? Now, him and Devin Haney. Now, I'm going to, I just got to be real. I think Cambosis is going to win the fight. But Devin Haney has done things in that boxing ring against his subpar to, 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 to good opposition, where Devin Haney looked like, a young, 
He's like a pretty boy Floyd there without the power. But it reflexes, um, offense, defense, his IQ, fighting on the inside, um, making his opponent miss. Just everything, his, his, everything that he did in the ring, you're watching that and you're like, man, nobody's going to beat him. Until you realize Devin Hayden doesn't have the power to really do anything unless somebody wants to sit there and doesn't have the toughness, doesn't have the grit, then they're going to have problems. But now this is what you have going on, right? Devin Haney and Cambosis, that fight, Eddie, Eddie Hearn was in a position where he was trying to force Devin Haney to get in there to fight Cambosis immediately because he felt that we all know Devin, uh, Eddie Hearn was just kicked to the curb because top ring wasn't going for Eddie Hearn being involved in that. They already they went and Devin Haney had to sign with top ring to get the fight with Cambosis. But Eddie Hearn wanted Devin Haney to get in there to fight Cambosis for the Undisputed before there was some, for the sanction body came down and forced uh, uh, Lomachenko as a WBO mandatory. And everyone, a lot of people feel that Lomachenko's a, a harder fight for Haney than Cambosis. So they felt that if Cambosis and Lomachenko had to fight, then Cambosis would, would lose that fight without, without a doubt. And now Lomachenko has all those belts, and now Haney has a look at, look at going against Lomachenko. And then, you know, most people feel that Haney doesn't stand a chance against him. So Hearn was trying to look at fights in the Middle East and everything else, and what he does, trying to figure out the way to, to make the most money, instead of really paying attention to what's going on in his backyard and seeing that they were about to kick him to the curb because top rate doesn't want anything to do with him. So long story short, um, all this stuff happens in Ukraine. On the Cambosis side, I think they take a look at what's the bigger fight, going in there against Lomachenko because top rank's pushing for that, and we all know why top rank was pushing for that. Going in there against Lomachenko, which, you know, Unfortunately, the whole stuff happened in Ukraine. Lomachenko's not available. So now it's like, okay, fight Devin Haney. But what was the bigger fight? The undisputed fight or Lomachenko? But see, top rank, man, they want to, all these promoters want to keep things in-house. That's why they were pushing for that. But, you know, Lomachenko couldn't make it happen. So the second option, fight Devin Haney for the undisputed. Which, to the Cambosis camp, was a sigh of relief because that's a much easier fight. But this is, this is the thing. Uh, De Devin Haney is still a very, very great boxer. But the guys he's gone up against, they're not gonna, they didn't let their hands go the way Cambosis is going to let his hands go. And Devin Haney, the main reason why I give Cambosis a chance, I'm favoring him to win the fight, is not just because they're in Australia. I, I think no matter what Devin Haney does, he can't win, I, I, honestly. But let, forget that. I've done other video videos on that. I'm not going to get into that. But without talking about them robbing Devin Haney, just, let's just set that aside. What I've noticed about Devin Haney lately, and this is why I feel wholeheartedly that Kambosis is going to beat him, and I think he's going to drop Devin Haney. Because Devin Haney has gotten into this, into this routine of getting in a fight and wanting to stay in the pocket too long and trade. And it almost cost him the fight against Linares, and it caused him some damage in the Jojo Diaz fight. When he gets in there with Cambosis, and he got all the lights, 80,000 fans, all these different emotions going through him, wanting to look great and go prove everyone wrong that he could go to Australia <clears throat> and not just outbox him, but knock him out. It's what Devin Haney saw about, knocking out Cambosis. He's going to get in there and realize that Australian Manny Pacquiao who can throw a thousand punches around if he wants to, has shorter arms, shorter punches, has power, he has IQ, he can counterpunch, he has counterpunching abilities, and he's not afraid of nothing Devin Haney brings to that ring. Devin Haney's going to do good boxing, keeping him at range, because Devin Haney has the much longer arms, outstanding reflexes, super fast feet, and outstanding footwork. But Devin Haney's going to make a mistake. Because I think at certain points, the fight's going to look kind of easy. 
Because Devin Haney's going to run. He's going to get booed. They may throw beer cans and, and stuff at him from the crowd because the Aussies get, get a little wild. But at some point, Devin Haney's going to make uh, make, a, make a mistake and decide to stand there in exchange. He's not going to be aware of the time on that clock. Probably be like two minutes left in the round. And Cambosis with those short, those short T-Rex arms and that power... And that ferociousness of Pacquiao, he's going to rip into Devin Haney. He's going to hurt him. And Devin Haney's going to be on Queer Street. And he's not going to get out the round. Because condition-wise, got to give the... Uh, I got to check the box for Cambosis as being in better condition than Devin Haney. Now, Devin Haney's in great condition. Don't get me wrong. The man can go 12 rounds. He can fight the whole 12. But he can't fight it as hard as Cambosis can. That in my opinion, is the number one reason why Cambosis will beat Devin Haney. We're talking about Chinny, okay? You can say, oh, well, De well, Cambosis got clipped in his last fight. He did. He got hit by Teofimo, an extremely hard puncher. He took several shots from Teofimo. He didn't like him. He pushed through it. There was a lot of time left on that clock when Cambosis was fighting Teofimo. But he showed the kind of grit, the kind of uh, mentality to find a way to win and persevere. And you could say, well, Teofimo didn't do what he needed to do. He was fighting, you know, a little reckless, irresponsible, and he let him off the hook. Okay, no problem. Doesn't matter. He, did, he didn't get him out of there. Then what happened? Cambosis came back and like a beast, like a beast the rest of the fight. So when, when you look at that, that shows... Not just the kind of mentality that shows what's in his core, what's in that Australian spirit, that Greek spirit. And it shows that he must have experienced moments like that before. And them sparring sessions with Manny Pacquiao. I don't care what anyone says. I don't see why more people aren't talking about uh, the benefit of him being Pacquiao's sparring partner for all that time. I don't see why people aren't talking about that. I don't see why people aren't talking about that. And I think going into this fight, Devin Haney has an experience, an opponent with that kind, with that mentality and that ferociousness. And Devin Haney, I think, is going to get a wake-up call real quick. And at the end of the day, when it comes to Cambosis, man, he just, he's also a very likable person. And I think... Sometimes people can watch someone and how they are at the ring and can underestimate them. But you need to pay attention to this man and his training sessions and everything else. All of the strengths that Devin Haney has, Cambosis has. The, the only advantage I really give Haney, okay, o overall, he's a better boxer. I'll just go ahead and put that out there. So don't try to, you know, rip me in the comments. He's, he's a better boxer. But footwork, they both have great footwork. Speed, they both have great speed. Uh, defense, they both have great defense, but I had to give the edge to Devin Haney. But the real advantage Devin Haney has is that long reach. And Devin Haney doesn't always use it, which is sad to see. It's like the towering inferno from Dora. All of that reach doesn't use it. Gets in close, fights in the pocket, gets banged up. We saw what happened when he did that with Lubin. Got dropped. Almost got put out of there. You talk about guys from the past like Paul Williams, all that reach. Want to get in close, mess around, get dropped. Saw what happened when he fought Martinez. And that's what I think this fight is going to be a lot like. Paul Williams against uh, Sergio Martinez. And I think uh, we saw what happened with Paul Williams when he got, he was uh, coming in with that hand down and get, getting comfortable. He got clipped badly. So, Dev, Dev, so, so you got all these guys with these advantages of reach and want to come in there with the guy who doesn't necessarily have the ability to get to him as easily, but they compromise those advantages by being stupid. And I think Devin Henry is going to get caught up in the moment. He's going to go over there and he's going to get knocked. Well, I think he's going to get knocked down. He may get knocked out. Because uh, what Cambosis is bringing, he's bringing a type of firepower that Devin Haney's never seen. I don't care about the, the wars he's had in the gym. I don't care about any of that. 
he's, he's going up against something ferocious. And I'll go ahead and say this at 135. I think the most the, the three most ferocious fighters, in my opinion, it's just my opinion. I say Cambosis. I would say Pitbull Cruz if he chooses to fight at 135, and you know Tank Davis. But Pitbull Cruz and Cambosis are more active. See, that's the difference. Their activity level. They're more active. They're not going to sit back and settle for six or seven punches around, 15 punches around. They're going to let their hands go. And Pitbull Cruz may be the most ferocious out of all of them. But Devin Haney against Pitbull Cruz, he loses. Against Cambosis, probably loses. Not just because they're in, in, um, in Melbourne, because of the, the mentality and the, the aggression and the work rate of the fighter. Against Tank Davis, Tank Davis isn't going to let his hands go like that. But it just takes one shot from, for him. And Davis has outstanding boxing ability, outstanding IQ. You got to give Davis the, the edge in that fight. You look at what he did with uh, Isaac Cruz. It doesn't matter what anyone thinks. Uh, Tank won that fight. Yeah, it, was, it, it, it looked really close because he didn't get him out of there. But Pitbull Cruz, and he was throwing a lot, a lot of shots, but Pitbull Cruz was blocking him and just trying to walk him down. But it was a close fight, but Tank won. And you look at Devin Haney, he's never been in a position like Tank has been in, like Pitbull Cruz has been in, like what Cambosis has been in with Tia Fimo. Devin Haney's never experienced that. You can say, oh, he got in the sparring, man. No, he's never got that in a fight. But he's about to get it, and he's about to lose. So you just got to be, you just got to be real, and you got to be fair, man. That toughness, power, and grit, and it's just something that I think the fans are in a win-win because you just can't lose when you have. Uh, a guy like Haney and Cambosis getting in there, man. And Cambosis is flexing his muscles now as a 135 uh, division where he feels is the emperor. So I don't think he's going to have to pump his brakes. I think Devin Haney's going to have to pump his brakes and uh, and really sit back and process what he's about to go up against. And Cambosis and the Australians and the, the, the layover, uh, not the layover, that um, jet lag, and everything else is going to be different. Food, everything, man. Um, I don't know if there's certain shots he needs before he goes to Australia. He may not, but I, I just think that the, the entire process from now all the way up until the fight, I just think is Devin Haney's not really understanding what he's getting into. They're just seeing what's at the end of the tunnel, the light at the end of the tunnel, but that traveling down through that tunnel is going to be crazy trying to get there. It's not going to be easy. And that tunnel is dirty water. It's rats. It's all kind of bacteria and viruses. It's all kind of different challenges and stuff he's going to have to get through. Now, I'm not saying Australia is dirty. I'm just using an analogy of traveling through a tunnel to get to that light. You're going to have to cross, well, probably some crocodiles in there. But um, you're going to have to get through that, man. And I just don't think Devin Haney really understands what he's getting into. Smart team, smart father, but even smarter top rank, even smarter Bob Arum, because Devin Haney has been put in position to just lose. And... I think even though they're fighting stateside, Devin Haney would struggle because Cambosis is just a monster, man. You know, counter-punching ability, everything. They're like, you got to give that man credit. And Devin Haney, like I said already, he's the, I think he's a better boxer, but I just he's going against somebody who's not going to sit back and let him pop shot him and not box him and move around the ring, and he's not going to be able to get beyond those punches, close the distance, and make Devin Haney pay. Like, it's, Cambosis is not a guy who's going to sit back and just allow you to just beat him down and be okay with losing. On points, you you're gonna have to kill him, and like I said, he got he's like he's the Australian Manny Pacquiao in my opinion, and um and I think it'll show on fight night. But anyway, if you like if you if you agree, like the video, even if you agree or disagree, leave your comments below. But like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, even if you disagree with me. Um, y'all keep safe. I appreciate the support. Cambosis for the win, in my opinion. Devin Haney is a super talented fighter. I just think they just put too many obstacles in front of the man for him to go over there and be 100% and come close to winning that fight. I just think Cambosis is going to, I think Devin Haney is going to try to prove a point, prove everyone wrong, stand there in exchange, and Cambosis is going to clip him. Just see it happening. Um, but that being said, y'all keep safe. I'm in the breeze.